everyone, welcome. My name is Lana Raymer, and today I'm going to talk to you about supporting your immune, respiratory, and emotional health in a natural way. I um, am not a doctor, uh, but I have a PhD in Recreation Leisure and Wellness Studies. I'm also a Yoga Alliance certified uh, yoga teacher, 200 hour yoga teacher, and a certified herbalist. Um, I've done my 450 hour herbalist certification and I'm currently working on my um, certification in medicinal aromatherapy. So my big focus is yoga, natural wellness, holistic health, and also plant medicine, whether through herbs or essential oils with aromatherapy. And uh, I wanted to share this knowledge with our community because these are the things that I'm doing on a daily basis to support my immune health, my respiratory health, and my emotional health and stress response. So. I'll go through a couple of general guidelines for each. I have my little notes here with me to make sure I don't forget anything, and I'll show you some of the things that I'm using. Um, so for immune health, one of the first things I would recommend is nature. Going out in nature and um, going for walks. So nature and exercise are going to be very helpful in supporting a natural immune response of your body, especially if it's sunny out. Um, the sun is a very natural bacteria killer, um, and so it's really good to expose yourself, get that extra vitamin D, which is also going to be supportive for your immune system. So going out in nature, uh, and again, as an herbalist, like this, this is probably what you're going to hear me say all the time. The cure for everything is going out in nature. Um, so I really recommend, and I've seen a lot of people these days going out on walks, spending time with their family, all of that is really, really wonderful. So keep doing that, keep getting out. The parks are open, the trails are open, uh, especially when the sun is out, please get outside, just if it's for 15, 20 minutes, and walk and breathe some fresh air and get the sunshine rays on your face. Um, the second thing I wanted to emphasize is movement. I'm a yoga teacher. That's my preferred method of movement. Moving stagnant energy around the body, but also on a more physical level, moving um, blood, moving lymph. Our lymphatic system is what helps to fight um, you know, unhelpful things that are entering our body. And uh, the lymph nodes is where a lot of our immune system is sort of residing. And so um, unlike blood, the lymph actually doesn't have an organ that moves it around, right? We have our heart, which pumps the blood, but uh, lymph doesn't have it. So if you don't move, the lymph doesn't move and it doesn't clear your body as effectively as it should. So moving, any form of exercise, again, going for a brisk walk, taking a yoga class. There are so many things that are available for free now online. I highly recommend uh, giving yourself at least 30 minutes of brisk movement a day to support your immune system in a top-notch condition. Um, some of the other things that are super easy um, and have shown scientifically, when I was doing my PhD, um, we actually went through studies where uh, some of them longitudinal studies that have showed that things like expressing gratitude and helping other people uh, and I know some opportunities during uh, this time for volunteering might be limited because we, we are trying to stay at home. But there's still things you can do. One of the things I've been doing is writing letters to my friends and just sending them postcards and notes. Um, you know, it's more personal than just sort of um, hitting them up with a Facebook message. Uh, and my next step, once I kind of get around to uh, all the friends and relatives that I want to contact is to seek out an opportunity to write letters to uh, healthcare practitioners, folks in retirement homes. Research shows us that doing good things for other people are, is actually almost more beneficial for the doer than the receiver, for the giver than the receiver. So volunteering is a huge way. And the immune system seems to be the first thing that boosts up, which is so interesting. And so uh, doing good things for other people is really, really, help, really, really helpful in boosting your immune system. Uh, gratitude as well. So uh, having a daily gratitude journal maybe, uh, and, and there's something about writing these things. Again, not just thinking about it or typing it up on a computer, physically writing it. There's um, a really interesting concept and notion from um, traditional Chinese medicine uh, that kind of stems from acupuncture. 
that the the needle point of the pen is almost like an acupuncture where it kind of lets you um, let that energy out onto the page. So I really recommend writing, handwriting a couple of gratitudes every day. You can turn it into a family activity if you're looking for things to do with your family while you're staying at home. Uh, now in terms of some of the uh, remedies that I've been using, and again, I'm not a doctor. These are just time-tested folk medicines that have been used uh, by generations of people um, fairly successfully to support our normal functioning and our daily well-being. Uh, so one of the things that I've been doing religiously for the last couple weeks is elderberry syrup. And you can make your own or um, it's fairly readily available. You can get it on um, online. But elderberry is a very powerful plant. Both the um, flowers of it, but especially the syrup made from the berries uh, in supporting a normal uh, immune response. And so taking a little teaspoon of elderberry syrup uh, once a day and chasing it down with some water or juice uh, can be very beneficial. Another thing that I, um, another plant that I really reach out for every time when uh, I'm thinking about immune health is echinacea. And um, I'm taking it as a tincture. That's how I have it available. I also have dried echinacea just kind of hanging in my kitchen. So I snip a couple leaves or uh, flowers and just make tea with it. So if you can get your hands on some echinacea tea, that's also a really, really wonderful way to uh, help boost your immune system. Um, in the absence of those, and if you don't feel like going out and trying to look for them or looking online for them, garlic. And I know you're going to be like, whoa, that's going to make a really interesting environment in the house. Hey, it doesn't matter. Garlic has uh, wonderful properties for boosting the immune system. And so finding ways to incorporate garlic, especially raw garlic, um, because it loses some the, some of the components and it breaks down uh, during cooking. But if you can find a way to incorporate a little bit of raw garlic into your meals, it's a very simple way to get yourself um on that boost of the immune system. Uh, if you're feeling a little bit more fancy, uh, one of the really old traditional remedies is fire cider. Uh, so I made a big batch back in the fall and I'm really happy I did, because uh, now I can use it during um, this challenging time for our immune system. So what fire cider is, and you can look up recipes online, there's a ton. Again, this is a folk recipe, it doesn't belong to anybody. It's a, it's a traditional medicine recipe, but you take you chop up uh, basically whatever you have, you uh, garlic, onion, um, shred some horseradish root, some turmeric root, some ginger root, take a stick of cinnamon, a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Uh, if you have some dried echinacea flowers, put it, put it all in a mason jar and cover it with apple cider vinegar. And then let it macerate for at least two weeks. It's recommended four to six. And then um, strain it add honey to taste and take a shot every day. Or if taking a shot of this is like, oh my God, I can't do this. This makes for an amazing salad dressing. So putting a little bit of extra virgin olive oil and then some fire cider on top of your salad using it like you normally would vinegar. It's yummy, it's delicious, and it gives such a kick to your immune system. It's quite phenomenal. Um, some of the other things you can do, I work a lot with essential oils, and so some of the essential oils that I recommend when people are trying to work on their immune health are any citruses are going to be super helpful. I have tangerine here, uh, which smells really nice. So any kind of citrus essential oils, if you can get to diffuse them around your home or just apply them topically, will be very helpful. Another one that is fairly well known is Malaleuca or tea tree, uh, also known to have helpful properties for the immune response. And the king of all oils, frankincense. Um, very For a very, very long time, uh, frankincense trade route has been nearly, um, if not more popular than the silk and the spice trade routes. Frankincense was worth more than its weight in gold and frankincense resin those little teardrops from the of resin from the frankincense tree uh, were used um, in a way they were chewed on to uh, receive the um, uh, helpful properties 
for the healthy cellular cellular response for the healthy immune response in the body. So now instead of chewing on the resin, we have access to the essential oil. So it can be very, very helpful as well. So some of these things can be fairly easily incorporated into your daily routine to help the immune response. The next thing is our respiratory health. And we're in this time where we have a lot of sort of concerns about our respiratory health, but we also are, um, you know, in that time of the year where environmental threats are just high and there's pollen floating around and there's all these things going on. So some of the things that um, you can do, again, if you're uh, not suffering from reactivity to pollen and being outside this time of year, going out in nature and breathing the air uh, in a park, in a forest, hit a trail. Uh, that's going to be really, really helpful. Um, another technique that I always recommend to people is uh, different pranayama techniques or yogic breathing. And you can look them up online. There's a ton available. There's videos, there's tutorials, there's breath of fire, there's the square breathing, there's the deep abdominal breathing. So, But it's basically like a workout, right? These, this bre these breath work techniques are... Uh, like workout for your respiratory system, making sure it's functioning in a much more efficient way. Most of us don't use the full capacity of our lungs. We never have to. So these breath work techniques, uh, retention of the breath, like breathing in and holding your breath for a little while, you can find a lot of them online. They're very readily available. Again, this is not sort of anything patented or belonging to anybody. It's a, it's centuries old um, philosophy and approach to health and wellness and uh, doing pranayama techniques can be very helpful in training up and um, getting your respiratory system to a very very good place um, some of the uh, plants and herbs that are very gentle and very helpful in supporting respiratory health are black cherry black cherry bark uh, can be made into a delicious syrup that can be taken um, as a cough suppressant and it's, um, again, a, just a folk uh, generations old remedy uh, that is uh, very beneficial for anybody who is just trying to get a good night's sleep, but a, they're really bothered with cough. Um, again, that's not a remedy remedy. It's just helping soothe the cough. So um, don't think of it as like a cure, but just something that sometimes you just want to get a nap in so your body is rested and can restore itself better and you just can't go to sleep because you're just so bothered with cough. Um, another plan that uh, I would recommend highly uh, is mullen and it's uh, widely available. Uh, actually, I have some growing in my front yard. Um, in, in a lot of parks around uh, this area and uh, it's fairly common to the northern hemisphere and mullein leaves can be dried and made into tea it's very gentle um, it's, it's not like one of those really strong acting herbs but mullein is a very coating herb it's uh, very helpful to support the mucosal lining of the bronchi and the lungs uh, so it can be very soothing to us uh, when we're experiencing a lot of irritation in the respiratory system, a lot of dry cough or any, any kind of like in, inflamed um, states there. Um, another really helpful way, and this is sort of specifically where I think aromatherapy really shines, um, is using essential oils that are helpful for supporting the respiratory system. And the reason they're, it's very helpful because you can literally inhale them, right? And they will very effectively, very efficiently, very quickly get into your lungs and support um, the healthy environment in your lungs. One of the first things that comes to mind is eucalyptus. Eucalyptus is known, um, again, for generations as a folk remedy. Uh, eucalyptus leaves would be steamed in hot water and then you could would kind of put your head over a bucket of that, put a towel over you and inhale um, this steam of the eucalyptus plant to help uh, support your respiratory system. Same is known for peppermint. Also, uh, you know, making some peppermint tea and then just bringing it up to your nose and inhaling. You can do the same with the essential oil. Some of the other essential oils that are very helpful for supporting the respiratory system are cardamom, laurel leaf, and ravinsara. Ravinsara smells very similarly to eucalyptus. It's, it's a very similarly acti acting plant. 
um, it's just a little bit more potent, I believe, than um, eucalyptus. So again, all of these can be added to a diffuser, uh, and you can just diffuse it throughout your home, or put a little bit on a cotton ball if you don't have a diffuser, and just inhale it, or just put a little drop in the palm of your hand, rub it together, take a little cup with your hands, put it over your nose and your mouth and take a couple of deep breaths. That's really all it takes. And last thing um, that I think is very pertinent during this time is uh, talking about emotional health, right? There's so much stress floating around, um, whether it's just the fear of what's going on um, in that health environment in the world, whether it is the worry about the economy and um, unemployment and how long is all of this going to last, uh, whether it's, you know, being cooped up in the house and being, um, you know, having to homeschool your children. So there's all of these different things that are uh, affecting the way that we are uh, able to cope with the stressful environment. And so some of the basic recommendations that are very simple yet very, very effective that I have are, number one, you guessed it, nature. Going out in nature. It's very soothing. It's very grounding. In Japan, uh, there's a book that came out uh, on the Japanese art of forest bathing, which I think is incredibly funny because the fancy term of forest bathing is a good old hike through the woods. But um, there's there's a number of things that are happening. Um, you know, your eyes are resting from uh, being exposed to so much digital media and information. Leave your phone in the car, go for a walk, uh, listen to the rustle of the wind in the trees, very soothing sounds, just the energy of the stillness of nature is very grounding. And then again, the trees emitting the smells, emitting the essential oils is going to be very grounding and soothing as well. Um, Another approach that I highly recommend is meditation. It doesn't have to be long. It can take five minutes a day. Just closing your eyes, focusing on your breath, just, just little things like that can be so, so helpful in uh, bringing you back to yourself and to a state of centeredness and calmness. Maintaining your sleep hygiene. This can be very, very challenging when you're stuck at home for a while because you don't have to wake up at a certain time so you can stay up late and go to bed. I know... Um, I've fallen prey to that so many, many times. But going to bed at the time when you normally would, if you were to go places, and then waking up at a time where you would normally, when if you were to go places, is crucial to keep your circadian rhythms going. Some, uh, you know, consistent waking and going to sleep times are a huge part of your sleep hygiene. Uh, another part of it is turning off devices or getting off of devices uh, at least an hour before you go to bed. I know it's so tempting to put on a movie and just watch the movie until your bedtime and then just go to bed. It's going to be really hard for you to go to sleep because all of the screens emit what's known as blue light, uh, blue spectrum light, which is the only other place uh, we can get that is the sun, is the sun. And so when you are exposed to uh, electronic screens, computer, phone, TV, what's happening is your eyes are absorbing the blue light and it's tricking your brain into thinking it's daytime. And if your brain thinks it's daytime, it's going to be really, really hard for you to go to sleep. So see if you can, you know, turn a bedside lamp on and just read a book for like the, or, or play a board game or something like that instead of um, being exposed to a screen. Um, exercise is also really, really important. Again, getting yourself to uh, exercise during the day is going to make it easier to sleep at night, but also, um, you know, there's so much research out there. Like, I don't need to tell you that the amount of endorphins that are being released uh, during exercise is just it's flooding your body with happy hormones. Um, and again, whatever, whatever your exercise of choice is, if it's a brisk walk, it's a brisk walk. If it's yoga, it's yoga, uh, whatever floats your boat, but, um, that will greatly contribute to your emotional health. Uh, and other, in terms of the remedies, things I would, some of the things I would recommend is, um, 
one of the um, elements that a lot of us lack in our body is magnesium. And so uh, having a magnesium supplement, I use um, topical magnesium. So it's a spray um, that you can just spray on your body um, that can be very, very helpful. And uh, you can also take a magnesium supplement. Just make sure a lot of the supplements that are sold on the market are calcium magnesium, which actually actually doesn't make sense because calcium and magnesium uh, fight each other for absorption. So you want pure magnesium. Um, my herb school teacher said that the best one is to the best one you can find is liquid ionic magnesium, whatever brand. But um, you can put a couple droplets into a teaspoon uh, with some water, or just put it in a glass with water and just uh, drinking about 30 minutes uh, before you go to sleep. Um, another uh, really great things to do uh, for emotional support and just for uh, help with sleep, which again, being well rested helps us emotionally tremendously. Uh, herbal teas. Herbal teas are so wonderful. And if you uh, can make your own, that's great. If not, there's a lot of wonderful uh, options out there. Uh, they're fairly affordable, but things look for things that have uh, chamomile in them. Um, what else would be good? Uh, chamomile, mint, some lemongrass, uh, anything like that. Any of those soothing, calming herbs. Uh, are going to be very, very helpful. So I usually have a big cup of herbal tea. I put together my own based on the herbs that I know I need at the moment. I have a bunch of jars of herbs and then I just put them together. Uh, I do some lavender, I do some melissa, also known as lemon balm. I do some linden, uh, some chamomile. And so it makes for this yummy uh, herbal tea that is just so wonderful to drink before bedtime. Uh, and then again, in terms of aromatherapy, something that I um, have found to be very helpful are the aromatic groups of florals and trees. So for florals, you could do things like, you know, the classics, lavender is really great. Um, you can diffuse, or if you don't have a diffuser, just put a drop on your pillowcase so you're able to smell it. Or apply topically, dilute it in a carrier oil. Uh, one of my favorites recently has been Roman chamomile before bed. Um, and for the tree family, though tree oils are also known to be very soothing, very calming. Uh, my two favorites when it comes to going to sleep are cedarwood and uh, vetiver. Um, I love to combine these with a little bit of carrier oil and apply them to the bottoms of my feet before going to sleep. And that just knocks me out dead. Um, it's a really wonderful and quick way to... Um, get yourself to a very centered, calm, steady, emotional space, and also to have a good night's rest so you're not up all night with um, anxiety-inducing thoughts and worries. Uh, and when you get a good night's sleep, you wake up so much more rested and ready to conquer the day, whatever the day might bring, whether it's e-learning or, um, you know, having to come up with very creative projects to occupy yourself. Um, Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please stay healthy. Please stay well. Take care of yourself. Take care of your families. Take care of your communities. Uh, we're all in this together and um, have a wonderful day.